So guys, there is one amazing movie dialogue in KGF which talks about violence. Now similarly, based on this particular video, I need to modify this dialogue based on DSA. So I hope you have heard about this dialogue. So let me again rephrase it. DSA, DSA, DSA. We don't like it. We avoid it. But DSA likes us. We can't avoid it. Hello guys, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So one of the most common questions that have been asked by many people, whether DSA is required to become a data scientist. Now this specific question I have got tons. I mean, I'm teaching in the live class when I'm probably uploading videos in the YouTube channel, when I'm doing live sessions in the YouTube channel, many people have asked me. Now, this question needs to be rephrased and needs to be asked in a better way. Now, let me just talk about it, whether you require DSA or not to become a data scientist. And here I will be covering lot many points so that your confusion will be cleared completely. So please make sure that you watch this video till the end. Now, guys, with respect to DSA, you know what I feel, okay? Whether DSA is important or not, whether DSA is required or not, or whether the question what you're specifically asking, whether DSA is required to become a data scientist. I need to rephrase this question and tell that you should ask whether DSA is required to become a better programmer. Now, this is the first question that you really need to ask. Whether you are in web development, full stack web development, whether you are a full stack developer, whether you're working in Java, whether you're working in C++, whether you are creating data science application, everywhere programming is required. Now to become a better programmer, you definitely require DSA. So one important thing, see, in my life, right, how many interviews I have specifically given, both in product-based and service-based companies, it's not like that I had to prepare DSA every day. You know, I just prepared for some amount of time. And luckily, I also did not ever gave any interview with respect to DSA. Then also I was able to crack data science jobs. So for the people, you know, for, for whom they specifically ask DSA data structures and algorithm, that does not mean that I'm saying that don't study DSA to probably get into data science. If you are probably a fresher, a software engineer or some experienced person who wants to probably crack some amazing product based companies like Amazon, Intuit, Netflix, Facebook and all. The first round of interview will definitely be something related to DSA. They will give you a problem statement and they'll tell you to solve that. And that is usually done to just check how your programming skills is. And if they're fine with that, then only you probably go to the next round. But what I have seen is that, right? Many people only focus on DSA. I have to probably learn the data structure and algorithm. I have to probably solve 500 lead code questions, let's say, and then probably go for the interview. That is good. Okay. That is really good. But don't only make DSA as one target, only one specific target. Okay. I want to crack Amazon product based companies. I will only be going with respect to that. See, with respect to every product based company, you will be getting some kind of role. You can become a full stack developer. You can probably uh, going for a data science role. So Amazon also hires for data science role, but they have a generic interview process. The first round will specifically be something related to DSA. Then the second round, they'll talk about how you have solved that problem. They'll ask about your projects. They'll ask about your another core skill. So according to me, my suggestion would be always that keep dsa as a part of your life because dsa makes you a better programmer understand in data science and full stack web development or if you're also a java developer everywhere we write code the most important thing is that you really need to write optimized lines of code when i say optimized lines of code that basically means considering the time complexity considering the space complexity and many more things and when you are able to write those kind of code, definitely your product performance will increase. If you are able to make your product a little bit faster, even with 0.5 seconds, that creates an amazing impact with respect to your product. And the type of 
amazing things that product can do will be quite amazing. I'm telling you why, because this will definitely help the company itself. Like, see, they are cricketers. They are Virat Kohli. They are Sachin Tendulkar. There's so many cricketers, right? They practice daily. They practice daily and then they perform well in the uh, matches itself, right? Now, when the performance of that practice is there, they, they have to practice daily. Similarly, you also have to practice DSA daily. Keep it as a part of your life because it will make you a better programmer. Whether you become a data scientist, whether you become a full stack web development, whether you become a Java. See, in my life, I was quite lucky. I did not have to invest every day the time, right? I invested initially some time. Then I started focusing more on the real world scenarios. I became a better programmer. I learned some amount of DSA itself, right? Even in machine learning, even in the data science part, they are, even in Python, there are so many different, different data structures, right? There, there are lists, dictionaries, there are tuples, stacks, queues, you know, even in machine learning algorithm, we have talked about one machine learning algorithm, which is called a decision tree. Internally, binary trees are specifically used. Now, these binary trees are also kind of data structures. I'm not saying that data structure is not used. It is used everywhere, right? Let's say if I want to probably implement decision tree from scratch, it will take it will take me at least 400 to 500 lines of code to probably write it. Now, decision tree is a kind of a wrapper on top of a data structure itself, which can directly be used and it will be used to solve the problem statement. Now, guys, whenever you have this confusion, see, for me, even though they have not asked me in the interview anywhere about DSA, they had focused mostly with respect to only data science part. Right? They did not tell me, okay, this is the problem statement. Just try to write it down with the help of some DSA. Just try to solve it with the help of DSA data structures and got them. Try to write it from scratch or line of code. No, they have never asked me. They gave me a data science problem statement. I solved that. Right? But if you are cracking some amazing product based companies, this is the routine. The first round will definitely be a DSA over there. So again, I'm telling you guys, the question should not be whether you should learn or not learn whether DS is required for data science or not. DS is required for everything that you do in life with respect to coding. It ha actually helps you to become a better programmer. So keep DSA as a habit every day. You are probably solving four to five problem statement, whether you're a college student, whether you're a fresher, whether you're an experienced person, right? Whenever you get time, at least solve a couple of problems. Think what the problem is probably talking about. Try to write down the code. By that, you will become much more better. And that is what is required because see, you don't know in companies you face lot of challenges, different challenges. And that challenges, I feel anything can be fixed with the help of coding. Okay. So from the next time, if someone asks you whether DS is required for data science or not, you should basically say that. If there is programming in data science, if there is programming in Java development, if there is programming in C, C++, then DSA is required to become, make you a better programmer, right? And this you should probably say to everyone because see, I've got tons of messages from people. They talk about Krish, <coughs> should we invest our time in DSA? See, for me, I know, see, Hardly in one interview, they had asked me a couple of questions after that, never in this 13 years of experience. Now, I'm not saying that every company will go ahead and ask you DSA. They are some amazing product based companies, which has this, which has this entire, um, you know, the interview process where the first round will be DSA, then they'll second round, they'll go and ask more about you. So my suggestion would be that always keep DSA as a generic thing in your coding career. Second is specialization. Look for something specialization. Even you are in college. See, I've seen also some people that will just only focus on DSA. Daily, they'll solve 100 problem statement in DSA, 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 DSA. Whether you're a college fresher experience, keep DSA as a habit. Second thing, keep one more thing as a specialization. It can be web development. It can be full stack with Java developer. It can be, uh, it can be data science. It can be big data. One specialization. And DSA should be generic. DSA is a part of everything, right? That would be my suggestion to everyone, guys. Again, it is my suggestion. It is up to you, okay? I'll not force or enforce something over here. Always do your proper research. But this is what my 13 years of experience is. So, yes, this was it for my side. I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you, one doll. Take care. Bye-bye.